Welcome back to another episode of You'll Be Fine. Today's episode is going to be a little different. We thought it'd be fun if you heard three Christmas stories. First, it's going to be me, then it's going to be my mother, and then end up with Jair. I'm going to be reading How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This season, we think it's very important to support small business. So, this episode, we are featuring a company by the name of Roots. Roots Home and Living is a woman-owned business that curates special pieces to make your everyday spaces come to life. Now, they sent us a box of goodies, and we don't know what we're getting, so we're going to open it up. It's a bandana for Mojo! Mojo! Oh, look, that's really nice. Ooh, this is really good quality. Ooh, a wine stopper! Oh, that's cool. Look at it. So that's the thing you put in the bottle. Yeah, sometimes people open bottles of wine and they don't drink the whole thing. And so you put this in the Where do they do that? I don't know. <laughs> Not so at this nice. house. <laughs> called a lazy Susan. That is not a lazy Susan. It's a lazy Susan. It is a lazy Susan. It spins. This is amazing. Oh, Oh, look at that. Shop Roots. Enter code Sharon for 10% off. Honestly, use code Sharon for 10% off. The link to get to Roots, the website, is in the description below. And uh, uh, back to the show. Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there Christmas Eve hating the Who's staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm-lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. That was the one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing And they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? And then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what I'll do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat. And he chuckled and clucked with a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there were none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up. And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All the windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. And he came to the first little house on the square. 
This is stop number one. The old Grinchy claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of that fireplace flue where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboard tricycles, popcorn and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he snuck to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who's pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. When he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the little girl. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed that tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney, himself the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the Who's mouses. It was a quarter past dawn, all the Who's still in bed, all Who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with the presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings, 3,000 feet up, up on the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he was grinchously humming. They're finding out that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will cry, boo-hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch. That I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started low, then started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, eyes cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little more. And what happened then, well, in Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And in the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. 
and he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beef. Happy holidays. Hi, I'm Nana, and I'm going to read you a story called A Creature Was Stirring. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. He'd never heard of a mouse not stirring, and tonight was his favorite night of the year. So he stirred, squeaked, eeked, and jangled the cat's jingle bells. Go to bed, whispered the cat. It's the night before Christmas. But Mouse was too excited, and he'd never heard of a mouse not stirring. So he drummed, stacked, nut cracked, and crunched on all the cookies. Go to bed, warned the other cat. It's the night before Christmas. But Mouse could not wait until morning, and he'd never heard of a mouse not stirring. So he smooched, buzzed, boing, and tricycled around the tree. Then he quizzied, caroled, snowplowed and paraded down the street. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Go to bed, mouse, roared the house, and the neighborhood, and the city, and the world. It's the night before Christmas. Okay, okay, mouse said. So he went to bed, but he couldn't fall asleep. He twiddled. He fiddled, he giggled, and wondered how all the other creatures could fall asleep on the most glorious night of the year. Then Mouse threw down his covers, jumped on his sled, dashed down the stairway, and hopped the train at full steam ahead. Huff and puff and chug and chug and merry choo-choo. Huff and puff and chug and chug and merry Christmas. Huff and puff and chug and chug and up the chimney. Huff and puff and chug and chug and don't crash into me, shouted Santa. But the train was much too fast. So when Mouse accidentally hit the gas, it revved vroom, screech, kaboomed straight into Santa's and every toy in his sack. Oh dear, said Santa. I think you'd better open your present now. Mouse untied the ribbon and took a quick, curious look. There in the box, he found a tiny book. He opened its shiny cover and squealed at the story ahead. He turned to the first page and twirled his whiskers while he read. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a... Uh, Mouse? Me? Oh no, I've ruined Christmas, he cried. Shh, Santa whispered. You did not ruin Christmas, but maybe you should just go to bed now, Mouse asked. Exactly, Santa said. So Mouse eased back into the station and slipped past the cast, tiptoed up the stairway and into his bed at last. And as he snuggled under the covers, he spied the sleigh and reindeer in flight. And just when he fell asleep reading, Santa called to all a very good night. And finally, on the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The end. I hope you and all your family and all those that you love Enjoy a very Merry Christmas. Bye-bye for now, Nana Claus. Hi, I'm Jair, and today I'll be reading The Night Before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mama in her handkerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, 
I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before, the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Merry Christmas, everyone, and happy holidays. Well, I know the holidays can be a little difficult, and so I hope that these stories brought you a little bit of nostalgia, maybe some comfort, or just kind of that breath that you need during the season. I hope you and your family have a wonderful holiday season. And as always, we will see you next Tuesday. Happy holidays, everyone.